Thanks for watching Sweater Weather, a proud member of the Harbinger Media Network. Remember to like this video and to subscribe to the channel. And if you can, consider making a donation to the show over at our website, sweaterweatherpod.com. So, you know, there has been at different times uh, a cultural fascination with taxi drivers. You know, in the book you mentioned, and you mentioned in our interview, uh, Martin Scorsese's Taxi Driver, you know, the sitcom Taxi, you know, with Danny DeVito and Judd Hirsch, anyone who hasn't seen those old episodes, they're pretty, it's a good show. Good show. Uh, yeah. And um, there's a kind of a less known novel. It's called Taxi by Helen Potrobenko, who was a female cab driver in Vancouver in the 70s. And, and it seems to me that maybe the 70s was a high point for cultural interest in taxi drivers. Um, and it's probably safe to say that this job doesn't have the same visibility in arts and culture as it once did. I don't know if that seems right to you or not. You know, your book is obviously going against this trend. But do you have a sense of maybe why the cab driver would find less cultural representation now than, than it once did? Well, look at the people you mentioned. Helen Potrobenko, uh, Robert De Niro, and, and the cast of Taxi were all white. They, they represent a time when the industry that they represent a time right before the industry uh, started becoming a, a industry for for immigrant workers, which it is now, right? I mean, uh, the the something or immigrants of color. I mean, that's what I mean. Yeah, that's what I mean. yeah. You know, before the, before the seventies and early eighties, uh, um, the taxi industry looked a lot different than it does now. Uh, 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 it, it was it was it was it was white men and women driving cabs, and now it mostly isn't. As, as, as we know, and I think that might have something to do with. It. I mean, even even the, the show Taxi, the the only the only immigrant in that whole show was also white, and he wasn't even you know it was, it was Andy Kaufman's Latka, and he and he and he was also a white guy. Uh, yeah, he play he plays. Uh, what is he? Yeah, what is his character? I can't remember. Like he's some. Maybe, he's weird. He's like his, weird, his character is that he's a weird guy from some yeah. fictional Eastern European country. Oh, like that. okay. Yeah. It's fiction. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, I believe so. I don't, I don't, I don't think he came from any real place that acts, that accent was not uh, familiar to, to anyone. Um, so yeah, I think, I think what changed after that is the, the taxi industry really became a job for it. It's, it's an, it's an immigrant job. It's a kind of job that immigrants do. And let's, let's face it that those kinds of jobs are not held in, in, in typically in, in, in high regard. In Canada, right? Um, you know, I, I write about I write a chapter about Rawi Hodge, uh, 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 who you know drove cab in Montreal and did you know did a lot of you know immigrant jobs. He worked in a factory in New York. He drove cab in Montreal. And when and Rawi Hodge is a just for the audience who may not know, he's a celebrated Canadian author right, right now, right. Uh, winner winner of the like maybe one of the world's biggest literary prizes, the Impact Dublin Literary Award. Yeah, it was, it was uh, the biggest at the written. time, at least. It might still be. But yeah, he, yeah. Drives, he was driving. He wrote that. He wrote his, his Impact Dublin uh, award-winning novel called De Niro's Game, interesting enough, um, while he was driving cab in Montreal. And when uh, when that book hit, you know, when it became, when it became a, such a success, Journalists would would describe Rawi as the immigrant who made it, which is is, is a problematic. Uh, uh, I think it's problematic praise because it, it's the idea that you make it an, an immigrant who makes it is an immigrant who stops doing jobs that immigrants do, right? If you become a novelist, you've made it. But I look at some of the other drivers in the book who are still driving, who have. Who have supported their families, who put their kids through school, who who um who survived and you know wars and escaped you know terrible uh, trauma and deprivation, you know haven't they made it? You know you know did, did, we don't we don't we don't say that they've made it because they're still driving cab. Um, so I think I, I think I've drifted away from your original question, but there is I think there is a sense that I think part of the reason why the the cab driver is not such a common character. A, a celebrated character in 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 contemporary culture, it's because it's a, it's a job that 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 the society at large diminishes that 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 feels is 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 a uh, is not to be celebrated. I've had I had one cabbie tell me that often the his passengers treat him as if he's a part of the car, 
right? You know, this idea that these are the these are the invisible uh, uh, men and women that drive us around, and and they don't get a lot of a lot of respect. And you look what's happened now with with the, with the with the rideshare apps. Uh, although if I said rideshare to any of these guys, they would lose it because they know that you <laughs> shared they're being paid. For. But these 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 ride for hire apps, um, those. You know, so many uh, uh, citizens of the of, of 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 Calgary and everywhere else who who love Uber will will you know you know talk about Uber. Uh, um, you know, they're they're, they're they 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 don't consider Uber a problem because to hell with the cab drivers. If, if if that industry can't survive, then it can't survive. Um, th- there's no we don't value those men and women behind the wheel in the same way that we, that, that maybe we used to. I don't know if it's romantic anymore. You know, I don't. You know, I, I think you know. It's it's it's. There's something about that too. Yeah, I mean, those like say certainly taxi driver. There's a whole romantic element to uh, to that character. Uh, lo- kind of lone wolf uh, out there at night. Um, you know, he's you know famously psychologically disturbed, but he's kind of oddly redeemed through you know what happens in that. I think there's something about the '70s too. Like, yeah, certainly you mentioned that these are just jobs that are not valued in our in our society, and so. That's reflected in, you know, their working conditions as well as their kind of cultural uh, visibility or invisibility. Mm-hmm. But, there, you know, when you look at the 70s, too, yeah, there was a lot there was a big difference in, you know, who drivers were like racially. Yeah. And also, I think like the 70s, there was a tendency to, to uh, portray working the working class a little mm-hmm. bit more. I think the culture of that era and a little bit earlier um, had um, had sort of a larger role for like working class uh, people and characters. And in the 70s, a lot of that changes. And I think that's partly just because of the economic and the really kind of the large historical forces that are changing our economy. Mm-hmm. And one of the things they're doing is is uh, increasingly devaluing working class jobs. So attacking unions, yeah. uh, just kind of rhetorically, you know, saying, you know, working class people get paid too much. That's why we have the economic problems that they had in the 70s, like inflation, for example. So there's a whole cultural shift, I think, that begins in the 70s uh, around the working class that uh, I think it leads us to a place where, yeah, working class characters like cab drivers also um, get, you know, kind of we lose sight of them uh, in, in, in the cultural realm a little bit more. And it's funny, it's funny so, you, br- you bring that up because, uh, um, you know, early on, you know, the, the, the manuscript I delivered to my editor was not the manuscript that he thought he was going to get. And I think what what you're talking about here about the, the socioeconomic state of the industry, uh, how it's changed, where it's at now, all of all of the, all of those things, all all the business side of it, um, was something that I was far less interested in than the lives of the drivers themselves, right? which I think is, is quite clear in in, in in our interview and in the book. You know, I'm it's it's their life stories that I'm fascinated with. I was far less interested in taxi driving than I was with taxi drivers. Um, um, but I think, you know, when, when I, when I delivered my, my, my kind of my first draft to, to the, my editor, he was, he was surprised that, that, that there there wasn't the stuff that you're talking about now, the, the, that, that it was, it was, it wasn't there, at least not, not as much as he, as he thought it would be. Um, so that, you know, maybe maybe that's that's an entirely different book, uh, that, that someone much smarter than me could write about, uh, about, about, about all of that, um. But yeah, I, 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 it's funny you, you mentioned that because that, that, that's something that I didn't avoid, but something that I didn't focus on when I, when I, when I was writing the book. It's not my oh, area yeah. of expertise. Well, I mean, I'm so well, glad you wrote the book you did. I mean, that other stuff, you know, where did I learn that? In, in other books. <laughs> so, you, know, I, you didn't need to write that, that book. The book you wrote is beautiful. Uh, it's called uh, it's called Driven, this, the, the Secret Lives of Taxi Drivers. Is that right? The, the subtitle. Yes. It's a beautiful book. I highly recommend uh, that you read it. And uh, thank you again, Marcello, for talking to me today. Oh, thanks so much, Aaron. This was great.